Where is the mainstream media? Where you at, Stephen A. Smith? Where's Max Kellerman? The disgusting Joy Reid, Keith Olbermann, Jamel Hill. Hell, let's go ahead and mention my favorite virgin, Bamani Jones. Now, what do all these people have in common? KC, they're all useless. Good point. Though, I really wouldn't call Stephen A. useless. At least he can be entertaining. And sometimes I do find myself agreeing with Stephen A. Smith when it comes to on-the-court issues in the NBA. But what do all these people have in common? All of them love to talk about mythical discrimination. The NFL hates black people. Look at how they have mistreated poor Colin Kaepernick. He is so good with his hands. He gives the best woke hugs. His fingers feel so good in my bum. That qualifies him to be an NFL quarterback. Think about it. Quarterbacks, they spend a lot of time with their hands under another man's ass. Jamel Hill, she has attempted to make a media career talking about mythical discrimination. Joy Reid has tanked ratings on MSNBC pretending to be a victim of racism. You know how you can prove racism is not as prevalent in this country as Joy Reid wants you to believe? She still has a show in cable news. Joy Reid's ratings are complete shit, yet somehow... She still has a show on MSNBC. Hmm. I wonder why. If I had to guess, NBC Universal, they are afraid to fire her ass because she will call them racist. All of these useless race baiters, where the fuck are they? Where are they? All of these people who get two-inch stiffies when the topic of discrimination is mentioned, where are they? Here we have a clear case of actual discrimination. And the race baiters, the race baiters in the mainstream media, they're silent. Why? Why are they so quiet? Last week, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club made a big announcement. Now you may be wondering, why do I care? I don't watch croquet. Yeah. Neither do I. I don't watch tennis either. But the AELTCC, not to be confused with the LGBTQIA++ decimal point. The AELTCC, they actually have a certain degree of power and influence. The other alphabet group, their only purpose is to convince your eight-year-old son that his only pathway to true happiness is transitioning into a delicate little flower. It was announced last week, tennis players from Russia and Belarus would not be allowed to compete at Wimbledon. Now, like I said, I don't watch tennis. I don't give a shit about tennis, but even I know Wimbledon, kind of a big deal. It is the tournament of all tennis tournaments. If you're a tennis player, your dream is to one day play at Wimbledon. Yet, players from Belarus, Russia, will not be given that opportunity this year and possibly for the foreseeable future. Why? Because they were born in Belarus or Russia. Now, I'm no Confucius. I will never be confused with a scholar from Oxford. But I'm pretty sure this qualifies as discrimination. This is the opposite of inclusion, diversity. I mean, when you exclude a certain group of people based on their country of origin, that's the definition of discrimination. My question, though, where's the media outcry? Where's all the fake outrage? This story has barely been picked up by the mainstream media. ESPN, they have a couple of articles on it, but it's strictly the comments of Rafael Nadal and a couple of other players who express their discontent with Wimbledon's decision. But for the most part, the media is completely ignoring this story. Before I get into the reason, let me just say this. This is a prime example of why politics has no place in sports. Wimbledon released a statement saying, it is our responsibility to play our part in supporting Ukraine. Um, no, it's not. That is not your responsibility. It's your responsibility to host a tournament featuring the best tennis players in the world. It's your responsibility to ensure the facilities are maintained, tickets are sold out, the tournament's promoted. That's your responsibility. But let's pretend for a second. 
It is Wimbledon's responsibility to support Ukraine. It's their responsibility to fight this war. If that were the case, how in the fuck is banning Russian players from competing doing anything to help Ukraine? You think Vladimir Putin gives a fuck about this? You think he's going to stop firing missiles because Russian players aren't allowed to compete at Wimbledon? Hey, General, I command you to stop fighting in Ukraine. We have been banned from Wimbledon. The war is over. This is nothing but a woke virtue signal. I don't think anyone supports the Russian war in Ukraine, but it is extremely unpopular among the woke. If you want to be in Club Virgin, you change your Twitter picture to the flag of Ukraine. Sergei Stakhovsky, he is a former tennis player from Ukraine. He supports the ban on Russian players from Wimbledon. He criticized Rafael Nadal for having the audacity to speak out against this ban. Rafael Nadal, he said it wasn't fair to Russian athletes to be punished over a war they had no control over. It's not like Andrei Rublev is on the phone with Vlad talking about war strategies in Ukraine. Sergei Stakhovsky, he turned this around and said, it's not fair Ukrainian tennis players can't go home. It's not fair Ukrainian kids can't play tennis. So Russian players should share in the unfairness. Look, I don't want to criticize Sergei Stakhovsky too harshly. The dude is actually really brave and courageous. He got his family safely out of Ukraine, then returned to fight in the war even though he has no military training. He's a brave dude. And look, he's right. The war is not fair to Ukraine. But what the fuck does war in Ukraine have to do with Russian tennis players competing in Wimbledon? Nothing. The two should have no collusion with each other. In their statement, Wimbledon also said, we made this decision so we could do our part in limiting Russia's global influence through the strongest means possible. So we're going to limit their influence by banning players from a fucking tennis tournament? I guess what you're telling me, someone who likes watching Andrew Rublev play tennis, they're going to see him at Wimbledon and think to themselves, I really like that guy. Let me put on my hard hat and go fight the Ukrainians. What kind of fucking sense does that make? I go back to my original question. Where is the media outrage? The New York Times, they like pushing racial propaganda. Not one mention of this story in the New York Times. No tweets from Jamel Hill, nothing on woke take from Stephen A. Smith. Why is the media ignoring the story? Because it doesn't fit their narrative. The majority of people born in Russia, what color are they? White. Let me explain to you how racism works. I did some espionage recently. I used a fake name and took some online classes at Woke U. I wanted to learn how the useless think. I wanted to get a better understanding of their mentality. One of the classes at Woke U that I took, Defining Racism in 2022. The course had several professors I could choose from. Guess which professor I chose? <laughs> Bamani Jones. Rex Chapman, he was actually another option, but what the hell could I learn about discrimination from Rex Chapman? Just because he has been rejected by women his entire life doesn't make Rex Chapman a victim of discrimination. It makes him a leading candidate of losing his virginity to a praying mantis. But Monty Jones, on the other hand, he's an expert in racism. Go watch his hopefully soon-to-be-canceled show on HBO for six weeks straight. Bamani Jones outlined real racism. He proved to everyone he doesn't like white people because they're white people. But see, that's not racism. That's not woke racism anyway. What I learned from Professor Jones in defining racism in 2022, it's only racism when a black person is the victim of it. If you're white, you can't be discriminated against. After all, you have white privilege. Andrew Rublev, He's not being discriminated against by Wimbledon. According to Professor Jones, all he has to do is use his white privilege. Even if that doesn't work, it's okay. For 24 years, Rublev has lived a life of white privilege. So it's okay that this one time things didn't go his white way. The mainstream media. 
The mainstream media had little credibility to begin with, but the lack of coverage with this story further proves the hypocrisy in the media. Everything they do is agenda-driven. Russian tennis players, they don't fall in line with their agenda. We can't mention this story. It could be misconstrued as us supporting the war in Ukraine. They support discrimination when it fits their narrative. How many times has Stephen A. Smith supported the ban on Kyrie Irving in the NBA? Remember when Novak Djokovic wasn't allowed to play in the Australian Open because he didn't want to get Fauci fucked? That was okay. It's okay to discriminate against someone based on their Kobe status. But anyway, let me know what you think. Wimbledon, they banned players from Russia and Belarus. Why do you think the mainstream media is largely ignoring this story? Give me your reason. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.